All right, so we're starting section 6.3. So we have two more sections left, 6.3 and 6.4, but they're very important sections. They're where we're going to get to the more difficult counting principles and counting techniques and then applications that are, again, going to get a little more difficult. Numbers are going to get a little bigger. All right, so we're going to start to up it here, going away from the basics a little bit to a little more complex. We're still going to use the same rules that we did before, complement rule, union rule, all of those rules will still apply. Uh, we're just going to add to them right, and combine them with some of these new rules. All right, so 6.3 is specifically looking at what's called the addition principle and the multiplication principles. All right, so when we're finding the number in a set or sample space using our rules and counting techniques or subsets. This can also be used, it doesn't say that, but it's also using defined subsets. So that's what we need to do. Oh, actually it does say that, defining subsets. Uh, in each outcome, again, we're counting in chapter six because eventually when we get to probability, which is the next chapter, we have to be able to count how many ways does this happen out of my total number of ways. That's probability. All right, but before we get to probability, we have to know how to count things. So the first principle in 6.3 is the addition principle. It's when choosing among different alternatives or options, different groups. All right, and that's the key when choosing among different. The key word is or. When we're in a application, if I can say it, I'm going to pick from this group or this different group, All right, that's when we use the addition principle. All right, so suppose the first alternative, alternative A, group A, has N outcomes, N choices. All right, Bojo's, the other alternative, B, all right, so this would be the different group, has M out, outcomes, M choices. What's important about this rule is unlike the union rule where we can have overlap or not overlap, this rule only works if they're different alternatives. So that different means implies they're disjoint sets. All right, that's what that different implies. All right, so this work, this addition principle works if and only if A and B are different. All right, they, have, they do not share any common outcomes. If that's the case, and I'm selecting something from alternative A or something from alternative B to figure out how many total possibilities, right? What's the universal set? How many ways can I choose something from A or B? Well, you just add the two, just like the union rule for disjoint sets. So it's exactly the same thing. It's just a broader rule. All right, so the number of outcomes that are in A or B is just adding how many is in A plus how many is in B, right? There are an M choices in A n choices in B, so m plus n gives me all my alternatives as long as they are disjoint. So again, that's key. So a simple, simple example. I suppose that you want to buy one and only, again, so this is I'm going into a store, a local store, and I want to buy one drink. That's it, just one drink, one beverage. They offer three different types of drinks, three alternatives, right? Those would be the alternative, the choices, right? You can buy a coffee or a tea or a soda, right? And those are three different alternatives, right? Coffee is different than tea and different than soda, right? There are three different choices I could make. And it's or, right? I could, I'm only buying one, so I could buy a coffee or a tea or a soda. I can't buy all three. I can buy one or the other. Right. Each of your alternatives has different choices, right? So the alternatives are coffee, tea, and soda, right? Coffee, tea, soda. In the coffee choice, you can buy a regular coffee, a decaf, hazelnut, or French vanilla. So there are four choices for coffee, four different things I can pick if I choose a coffee type. Or if I pick a tea, there are green tea, blackberry tea, peach white tea, right? That's a three different teas. If I pick a soda, this particular store is regular Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, or Sprite. How many to total choices do you have? How many outcomes for a drink do you have? So again, this is a very, very simple case, but it, it gives you a good idea of what this addition principle is. Right? I have to pick a drink. Right? How many choices do I have? Well, I can choose. I can pick a coffee. 
or I can pick a tea, or I can pick a soda. Right, and the word or is separated by addition. There were four choices for coffee, three choices for tea, and three choices for the soda. And so that means there's a grand total of 10 choices, 10 outcomes. All right, so if I'm randomly choosing a drink, I have 10 possibilities when I walk out. Right? And they are disjoint sets, right? Coffee and tea and soda are different, right? They're different choices. They're disjoint. They don't have any overlap. There's no coffee that's also a tea at this particular store. All right, so that's the addition principle, all right? Which, again, is similar to the union principle with disjoint sets. We're just broadening it now, making it a little broader. All right, the multiplication principle, all right, rule, when used to deal with a multi-step process. The key word is and all right you are making a sequence of choices or steps all right sequence meaning you're going to do more than one thing unlike the last example where i was making one drink choice that's it i was just choosing my beverage type this will be now i'm going to do more than one thing all right so it's a sequence um, of choices or steps these can always be drawn as a tree and i'm going to set up a generic tree and then do one example with a tree case all right so, Choice one, step one, would have the first set of branches, all right? That'd be like flipping my coin, right? It has two, two outcomes. And then I flip a second coin, right? That's the second step in the process. So flipping a coin is sort of a multi, and if I'm flipping a coin multiple times, right? Step two would be then I flip the coin again, right? And I had two more set of branches on that. Well, if I flip it a third time, I'd have another set of branches there, right? And so it's a multi-step process, and there are different things that can happen in my multi-step process. All right, so to do a generic example, suppose choice one had N alternatives and branches, and then choice two has M branches. All right, I have to pick something from choice one, and then you pick, so it's different than or. Or means I'm only making one choice. I'm either going to pick from this group or that group. This means I'm making two picks. I'm picking something's going to happen from choice one, and something's going to happen from choice two. And so when I chick, pick my tree, and suppose I've got three alternatives for choice one. I have N1, N2, N3. And there were two choices from choice two, M1 and M2. All right, so if I set up my tree, I've got my choice, I pick one, choice one. Or I'll just write it as step one. So there are three branches if there are three choices. So N1 is an option, N2 or N3, and then I have to do step two, which there are two outcomes leading off of each of one of those. I could have M1 or M2, M1, M2, M1, M2. Then at the end would be all outcomes. All right, I would have N1 and M1. N1 and M2. Should have been different than N and M. All right, and then N2 with M1, N2 with M2. N3 with M1, N3 with M2. And there are all my outcomes. Right, and there are all, and there are six outcomes. Right, this is the multiplication process. All right, I had three choices from step one, paired with two choices from step two, and so I multiply three times two. There are six total outcomes. All right, and so that's the rule. Right, which again, we've done these in sort of the basic format with the Cartesian product. This is just now broader, encompassing more things this way, more application types using the word and. So when I make a sequence of choices, when I can say I'm going to do this and this and this and this, you could choose one of the alternatives from choice one and one of the alternatives from choice, and like I said, this can be multiple, right? and you can make a bunch of choices. The total number of outcomes is the product of the choices in each step. Product means multiplication, all right? If my first choice had n branches, three, 
My second choice had m branches too. Total number of outcomes would be n times n. So in my example, I had three outcomes for n, two outcomes for m, and there were six total outcomes. All right, total at the end of the tree, right? There were six, if you go back and look at my tree, one, two, three, four, five, six total different things that could happen if I have three choices from step one and I pair it with two choices from step two. All right, so again, the keyword is and, and it's a sequence of choices. All right, I have to do something in sequence. I'm flipping a coin one and I'm flipping it again and I'm flipping it a third time. I'm rolling a dice twice. I roll it once and twice and I can do it a third time if I wanted to. I'm gonna flip a coin and roll a dice, all right? I'm doing two things. So going back to that simple example we did earlier, all right, using the same local shop where I'm gonna buy my drink from example one. However, suppose you know you, you want a coffee, all right? It's early morning and you wanna buy a coffee. All right, so you already know that going in. I'm gonna buy a coffee. All right, so you're gonna pick one of the coffee options and then you have to pick a coffee size, right? You're making a multi-step project. You're making two choices when you're buying your coffee. What type of coffee and how big of coffee? Remember the coffee choices were regular coffee, decaf, hazelnut, and French vanilla. So there are four options for my coffee. And the drink size, I can pick a small, medium, and large. Simple local shops, so small, medium, and large. So I have three choices for my drink size, All right? How many? ways, how many total outcomes do you have, how many ways can you buy your coffee. It's a multi-step process. First you choose your coffee and then you need to choose a size. Alright, so for coffee there were, so first you pick a coffee and then you pick a size. There were four options for coffee and means we multiply and a size, there were three for those, and so there should be 12 total outcomes. All right, there are 12 ways I can order my coffee, right? There are 12 different ways my coffee can be purchased. All right, I'm gonna do a tree then to list all 12 outcomes, because sometimes that's helpful if we're looking for subsets. Now this one you might be able to figure out without the tree, but like I said, I'm gonna do the basic cases, so when we get to a little more tougher cases, um, tree will be a little easier. All right, so I'm going to list them here using a tree. All right, so first we have to pick our coffee, and then we have to pick a size, and right, then all my outcomes. All right, so remember there were four choices for coffee. All right, so I have one, two, I had regular coffee, decaf, French vanilla, and hazelnut. All right, so regular coffee are decaf, French vanilla, and hazelnut. All right, then the size, there are three sizes. So each one of these have three sets of branches coming out of them. I can pick one of those. And then there were three sets of branches that came off each of the possible coffee choices. All right, which are small, medium, large, small, medium, large, small, medium, large, small, medium, large, and then all the outcomes, and I'm just going to pair them together. So I can have a regular small, regular medium, regular large, decaf small, decaf medium, decaf large, and so on. Now again, this is a very simple example that you might have been able to come up with out the tree and there are my 12, if you count them, there should be 12 different ways I can order my coffee. All right, one of those ways is how I pick out. So I have a one in 12 chance of guessing. Somebody has a one in 12 chance of guessing how I'll choose my coffee. All right, that would be the probability, which again, we're gonna eventually get to in chapter seven. Right now we're just counting, all right? But those would be the 12 different ways my coffee can be ordered. All right, so we're gonna wrap. We're gonna do examples then in the next section. So basically, this example is gonna be a whole bunch of using the product rule, um, the multiplication rule, and the addition rule, the or rule, and the and rule. All right, so we're gonna look at examples in the next set of notes.
All right, remember when you pick or, you add the alternatives. I'm picking from this group or this group. I'm making one choice, and I have different alternatives I can make my one choice from. When you use and, it's a multi-step process. I have to pick this and this and this and this. It's a sequence of events. We can also mix the terms, all right? I can do ors and ands together. I can make different alternative choices and then a second set of different alternative choices and a third set and so on. And so I can use ors and ands together. All right, we can mix them together. That's when they start to get a little trickier. And we're gonna do that in the next set of notes. All right, so I'm gonna wrap that one up here and we'll do applications of and and or alternatives in the next set.